Hello, I'm Diego Gastaldi, Managing Director, Global Accounts at VMware, and welcome to the Telco Innovation Summit and to this Customer Spotlight session. I'm joined today by Bryce Mitchell, Vice President of Core Network Engineering at Rogers Communications. Bryce, welcome, and thank you for your participation today. Rogers has been a long-standing partner of VMware for the last decade in East Canada's largest and more reliable 5G network. You cover 800 communities and reach over 19 million Canadians. That is outstanding. Much of your network has been built on VMware infrastructure. You arrived at this decision because you were seeking flexibility and choice. Can you tell us why this is important to Rogers? Uh, yes, and, and thank you, Diego. I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you for the invite. Um, it was important for us to have uh, flexibility and choice in our network, I think, because um, cloud computing uh, is such a, a foundation for the future uh, of our company. Um, we've got the evolution of 5G and edge computing uh, that are really driving our industry forward. And we wanted to make sure that we had a solid partner and a solid technological foundation in order to be able to really deliver um, the future uh, off of this network. And so we, we were really excited about the, the VMware um, solution for a variety of reasons. We wanted to have a common layer of software and hardware uh, for all of our applications and workloads. We wanted something that was easy to automate and easy to scale. Uh, and we wanted something that, that had standard, well-published and predictable roadmaps of software feature and evolution. So um, this is part of the reason why it was so important for us to uh, choose a, a vendor partner that really brought that type of platform uh, to the table so that we could um, you know, uh, deliver 5G, but also uh, help advance our entire industry. And, and VMware checked a lot of boxes on that front. Thank you, Bryce. That is fantastic. And thank you very much for your trust in VMware. Telecommunications is exciting, but quickly changing with the advancements in 5G and upcoming Oran, moving from virtualization to cloudification. How is Rogers readying its network to take advantage of this new cloud economy? There's a lot of work that we're doing in this space. As you can imagine, this is an incredibly complex uh, transformation for our industry, not just the technology that's coming into play, but the new business models and the new type of talent that we need in order to be able to really leverage uh, this new capability. Uh, so some of the things that we've been doing uh, in order to get our network ready for things like 5G and Open RAN uh, is that we have been uh, modernizing and uplifting our IP infrastructure with a heavy emphasis on automation and automated capacity management and simplicity of network design. And we've been tightly integrating that uh, evolved uh, IP network capability with the VMware cloud solution as well too. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work to optimize and align our physical resources. Uh, this takes an incredible amount of computing hardware in order to deliver. And so space, power, cooling, and our data centers and edge sites have been something that uh, we've been moving the needle on uh, aggressively over the past couple of years to make sure that we have the capabilities in that space to be uh, agile and flexible and move quickly uh, on the opportunities as they came up. Uh, we've also been working really hard on developing uh, new talent and skill sets within our organization. Um, our industry has an incredible challenge in, in front of it in that uh, we have a very specific and focused set of technologies around uh, networks, um, uh, wireless, uh, but also we need to converge that with new ways of working, cloud technologies um, and, and software uh, type of, of work. So we've been working really hard to train and uplift our existing employees, hire new talent and get ourselves um, ready uh, to, to take full advantage of this new technology. Uh, we've also been investing a lot in automation and self-serve to make sure that as we deploy this, uh, these new capabilities. We're doing it in a way that is really efficient and reliable and sustainable by trying to automate and remove as much um, manual intervention as we can from the activities that we'll have to complete uh, on this network. And of course, continuing the theme of, of reliability, we've been heavily modernizing our uh, monitoring and observability tools to make sure that we have a really good set of visibility uh, and all the software and hardware layers that come together to deliver things like 5G and Open RAN and cloud computing to our customers. So those are some of the things that we've been doing um, here at Rogers to ready our network to take advantage of this new cloud economy.
uh, talking about new business models, uh, becomes new use cases, and it impacts both your customer community as well as the developer community. So let's go in that direction for a moment. Particularly in the case of 5G, what does it mean and what will it mean uh, for businesses running on your network uh, to be in 5G and why is it important? Yeah, that's a really great question. And I think uh, for me, this is the part that really excites me um, about 5G. The improved capacity, latency and performance are, are exciting, don't get me wrong, but it's the new use cases um, that get unlocked uh, that really, really drive these things forward. And it's, it's such a difficult question to answer, Diego, because there's so many uh, areas. I think really all aspects of the economy um, are impacted by this technology. But I have a couple of, of examples of things that are really getting uh, me excited. Um, and you know, one of them that really resonates with me uh, right now is uh, looking at supply chain logistics, which of course, uh, you know, as we are uh, recovering from COVID, have been thrown into sharp relief uh, recently in terms of the challenges that are in um, that space. And so even things as simple as, um, you know, having smart cities where you've got automated traffic flows and dynamic tracking of trucking and shipping and things so that um, goods and services can flow easier in and out of a city and help ease that supply chain um, challenge that we're currently having. Those are some of the use cases that we really see um, uh, around 5G and really see 5G um, uh, providing an advantage for. And so in scenarios like that, it's it's the cloud computing um, aspect and the high performance capabilities of the 5G network that really let us look at optimizing a traffic flow across the city, doing real time um, uh, edge computing, image recognition to track flows of traffic and adjusting the flows uh, using artificial intelligence to find the best way to schedule that traffic um, through a city. Is, is one example. Um, I think a few other examples that really jump out uh, are deploying um, augmented reality type of solutions uh, to enterprise uh, use cases. You know, even here at Rogers, we're starting to experiment with some of them as our technicians work on our cloud computing environments, being able to quickly identify, say, failed components and replace them uh, through an augmented reality scenario where they don't have to go and, and um, worry about pulling, say, the wrong card or piece of equipment is, is a really interesting use case. Um, couple that with private networks and extending 5G into the um, enterprise and manufacturing environments. We can bring these type of scenarios right to the factory floor, um, right into the office. I, I think this is where 5G uh, really, really starts to drive a lot of benefits. And this is why uh, in the earlier question, I emphasized the importance of us uh, working on automation and getting our networking um, really solid and ready for these type of use cases because we're transforming from having our network being very centralized and, and very, um, I would say, uh, scaled to a small number of use cases to a network now that is distributed at the edge and needs to be flexible and needs to uh, receive um, use cases that we haven't even thought of yet. Uh, so I think it's just the tip of the iceberg for 5G. Um, we're just getting to the point where we're starting to see some of those first really interesting enterprise and, and industry applications come out of it. And, and I'm very excited for how this uh, evolves into the future um, as this technology really starts to take off. That is, that is excellent. And yeah, we are definitely recovering from two years that nobody expected would happen, right? And, and as we come on the other side and hopefully uh, keep on improving from here, uh, new <clears throat> new use cases, as you said, will continue to surface. So going in that direction, looking at the developer community, um, they have an opportunity to capitalize and partner with companies like yourselves um, as you expose APIs and, in, in, and create environments that can be um, capitalized and consumed by, by the developers uh, to create new business services. What type of companies, applications or use cases, and you mentioned a few on, on supply chain management, what else are you seeing that is emerging in 2021 that is unique and, and, and can capitalize on 5G going forward? You know, providing APIs and programmatic interfaces um, and really being open and generic in our approach is, is the key to moving this forward because we don't know uh, what applications are really going to take off. And we want to be able to ease the friction of the developer community and the enterprises that want to come into our network to bring what they need and what they see as the use cases 
uh, into fruition very easily, um, and as I said, with, with low friction. So I think having a very open um, uh, environment and, and exposing that uh, in, in a way that developers and enterprises can use it is going to be absolutely key uh, for this uh, technology to take off. Uh, another uh, example um, use case that I really get excited about, though, uh, that shows the power of um, uh, 5G and, and edge computing and all, all those good technologies is uh, actually some of the uh, public safety um, uh, aspects of 5G. So very interesting use case uh, that we saw out of the west coast of Canada where there's a lot of seismic activity. Uh, it was a real-time um, network for gathering uh, data in the field to detect earthquakes uh, ahead of uh, them occurring. And of course, as you can well imagine, um, that's a scenario that requires really, really low latency. You know, earthquakes happen quite quickly. Uh, and so even a few milliseconds here or there becomes a challenge in terms of detecting them and providing early warning to save lives. And so low latency of the 5G network, uh, edge computing so that you're not bringing the, the workloads uh, too far away for analysis is really something uh, that requires this type of technology. So it's a really exciting use case. Um, again, with COVID, I think um, it's thrown into relief uh, for all of us. Uh, <laughs> The, the, you know, the challenges we, we see and how important public safety is. And so that's a use case that really um, excites me. Uh, we've also seen some really interesting use cases in the mining sector uh, as well, uh, combining private um, networks with edge computing for almost like a GPS of, of mines, which of course, you know, can't use traditional GPS signals down there because they're underground. Um, but we can do some really interesting things with 5G due to the nature of the network uh, to be able to provide precise uh, location um, provisioning autonomous vehicle driving so that you know you can get more efficient and safe uh, access to mines and things like that so just a ton of use cases and and to my earlier point I think uh, the the key to getting out of these at these use cases is providing that flexibility um, to the entrepreneurs and the enterprises that are dreaming up uh, these scenarios and making sure that it's easy and effective for them uh, to get access to our network and edge computing resources. And again, this is part of the reason why um, VMware is so exciting to us because you are such a leader uh, in the industry that um, there, there's a lot of understanding of how VMware works across. Uh, the non-telco spaces into enterprises and we see that as a as a competitive advantage for us as we try to enable these use cases um, and as we deploy 5g into our network that is excellent bryce and i think it's it's outstanding all, all that you're doing and i mean i think the the sky is the limit right so much that can be done 5g opens up so many doors and you guys are extremely well positioned to capitalize on that so all that being said i, I want to be very thankful to you for making the time uh, to be with us today. Very thankful to Rogers at large for the trust and, and the, the incredible collaboration that we have between our companies. Uh, I can't wait to see what we can accomplish uh, together going forward. So thank you very much for being with us today and have a great day. Thank you, Diego, uh, and appreciate the invite. I really enjoyed it and, and I'm excited for the future as well and looking forward to uh, working with VMware to enable that.